Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kyle Swanson alongside Dr. Guyana Vanyarachi, and we'd like to welcome you tonight to tonight's KSB Community Wellness uh, presentation on sports injuries and prevention. Uh, we'd like to thank KSB Community Wellness and Aaron Fox for putting this on tonight. And without further ado, we'll get started. The topics we'd like to cover this evening uh, are ankle injuries, some high ankle, Achilles and foot injuries as well. Uh, what you will see on exam and clinical findings, and then the treatments, both conservative and surgical. And then we will wrap everything up with some preventative measures to hopefully prevent some of these injuries. Well, first, ankle injuries. Uh, most common, and one of the most common things we see uh, are ankle sprains. Uh, this involves a twisting injury of the lower leg. You can land on an uneven surface or even um, another person's shoe. It can affect uh, multiple ligaments. Uh, we have ligaments on the inside and the outside uh, of our ankles. And so multiple uh, ligaments can be involved at the same time. Um, a high ankle sprain, now this involves the ankle syndesmotic ligament. And this is the ligament that helps hold the two lower leg bones together and is between the tibia and the fibula. Uh, ankle fractures. So with ankle fractures or ankle breaks, this can be isolated to one ankle bone or just like sprains, multiple bones can be affected. Uh, the injury can be closed versus open, which means um, sometimes if the injury is bad enough, a bone will actually pop through the skin and that is classified as an open fracture, which is a surgical emergency at that time. Uh, you can also uh, sustain associated injuries in the foot, the knee, the hip, and lower back. So although the main injury may be focused at the ankle, we have to look at the whole picture and make sure we're addressing everything. In regards to Achilles injuries, um, Achilles tendonitis is very common. Uh, this can be caused from trauma, um, trauma meaning a hard step, or even if something would hit the back of our lower leg. Uh, calf tightness or a tight Achilles uh, can also cause tendonitis. Uh, that chronic pulling of the tendon on the heel bone causes inflammation to begin uh, and can snowball over time. Uh, over time as well, you get what's called tendinosis. And so that tendon tries to heal itself and it actually thickens. And so you can feel like a bulge in the back and that is caused from the tendinosis. Um, an Achilles rupture, now this is when uh, you may feel a big pop or hear a lot uh, like a pop in the back of your leg when playing sports. And typically this will happen right at that area that's depicted in the picture. This is referred to as the watershed area. It is located two to six centimeters from where the Achilles tendon attaches to the heel. This area has the least amount of blood supply. And so it is prone to injury and um, poor healing. So, uh, that is a common area where you can experience a rupture, but it can also be higher up as well. You can get what's called a mid-substance, which would be higher than that level. Now, foot injuries, um, just like ankle sprains, you can develop a foot sprain as well. Uh, we have a lot of bones, tendons, and ligaments in our feet. Um, this first picture on the left, where it's lighting up in the red, uh, this is very close to where the Lis Franc ligament is located in our midfoot. It is located at the base of the first and second metatarsal bones. And this ligament is very important to help support our arch. Uh, it can be injured when the foot is in a plantar flexed or with a toes down position, and then there is pressure from up above. Uh, we commonly see this injury as well in motor vehicle accidents. Um, so it can be a very devastating injury. If this is not treated, what happens is the arch will collapse over time and patient will develop uh, arthritis and can be very debilitating in regards to walking. In regards to turf toe, uh, this in involves the great toe as in that picture on the right. Uh, a jamming of that great toe joint can cause inflammation and, and very painful range of motion in that toe joint. And foot fractures. So with all the bones in the foot, uh, there is a chance that you could fracture a toe, 
Uh, you can sustain midfoot fracture or a hind foot, hind foot referring to in the back of the foot, uh, the heel bone or the bone above that called the talus. Um, but there's a lot of different types of foot fractures that can occur as well. Uh, now I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Vanirachi. Uh, Thank you. So we're going to take a look at some of the exam findings or what we're going to see in clinic if you sustain a sprain or have a fracture, broken bone. So usually you're going to have a lot of pain, some bruising and swelling where that injury occurred, and maybe even a deformity. Sometimes you'll be able to put some weight on it, and sometimes you won't be able to. Another thing that we want to assess for is if there is a broken bone, if the bone is coming out from through your skin or not, which would be classified as an open wound. Um, another thing that we're looking for is foot and ankle instability. So if you're having sprains over and over again, you're going to have this chronic sprain where you're going to have a higher chance of future injury. Usually with this, you're going to have less strength and less, less flexibility flexibility and your sense of balance is going to be um, a little bit off. So when you have these kind of injuries, it's really important to know when you should go to the emergency room. So anytime you have a foot or ankle deformity, especially an open wound, really, really high pain. And if you're unable to put any weight, you should definitely go to the emergency room. We also want to look for if you did sustain an injury like that, if you have any other injuries further away from your foot. So a lower back injury or head trauma, we definitely want you to come to the emergency room then. So as far as conservative treatment goes, um, we do what's called protective weight bearing. So the image that you see on the far right, that tall black boot, that's the cam boot, um, that will be that's what you would be able to wear um, if you do sustain an injury. Sometimes you'll be in a posterior splint or a short leg cast. The middle image here is a uh, ankle brace, and that's usually if you sustain a sprain, you would be using an ankle brace like that. You also would be recommended to do RICE therapy, which is the acronym for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Um, during this time, we want you to Take, take it easy, minimize your activity, and you can even try some bracing and taping to better support your foot, like the image on the left. It's also recommended that you wear supportive shoe gear during this time, and then work with our physical therapist to regain your strength and your flexibility and your proprioception or your sense of balance. So sometimes conservative treatment doesn't um, fix all of our foot and ankle deformities and surgical treatment is warranted. So in that case, especially if you have a broken bone, we would be doing uh, ORIF or open reduction internal fixation, which is basically using different screws and wires to bring the two pieces of the bones together to allow it to heal in the best form that we can and preventative measures. So great ways to um, help prevent any of these common sports injuries is to wear supportive shoe gears for the that is sports specific, making sure you're warming up before your activities, spending time stretching, holding your stretches to for 30 to 45 seconds each, um, using rice therapy after activity and making sure you cool down your muscles and addressing any underlying um, imbalance. So making sure you're strengthening your muscles, working on your flexibility by stretching and working on your balance or your proprioception. All right, great. Well, that concludes our presentation for this evening. Uh, we hope that was helpful and you learned some uh, information that you can take and use. Uh, we wish everyone that is participating in a sport uh, the best of luck and we will plan on seeing you next time. Uh, once again, thanks to KSB Community Wellness and Aaron Fox. And we hope everybody has a great night. Thank you.